Mercury France is proud to introduce its most luxurious ship, the Sea France Rodin, the fastest and biggest ship of its type ever to sail Dover to Calais. See the difference with Sea France. Meet Donna. I just don't like dressing up for the fans, being gawked at. She's new to the life. You'll get used to all the attention. Mind you, babe. Yeah. Meet Chardonnay. Going out of the Patreon model's one thing, but getting married to one is embarrassed. She's used to the life. Well, that's not what he tells me in bed. Meet Tanya. You disgust me. She'll do anything to keep the life. If you lose the plot, we could both end up in prison. From the makers of Bad Girls, Footballers' Wives, Tuesday at 9, ITV1. Now, just before Jeff Bridges stars in White Squall, London Tonight with Marcus Powell. Good evening. As travellers using Southwest trains suffer day one of the latest 48-hour walkout by members of the RMT, the union's leaders seem prepared to seek more strikes. Downing Street's called for peace talks to resume. But the two sides seem as far apart as ever, with hundreds of thousands of passengers caught in the middle. Phil Bales reports. A now familiar story at suburban railway stations. Empty tracks as staff failed to turn up for work for the third day this month. The difference today is on the roads. Traffic built up into jams early as commuters could no longer put off returning after the Christmas break. Southwest trains could only run just above one in ten trains. Those who managed to get on them said the experience was not pleasant. It wasn't so much a delay, it was just discomfort getting on the train. So more like sardines, yeah. But, uh, no, it was appalling. <laughs> yeah, the train ran, but I had to um, get a lift to a station uh, five miles away to get a train stall. It's this country's main export owner, of the city being damaged. So please, people need to get a wider view of life. Talks between the two sides over the weekend broke down with Southwest trains insisting the dispute is all about this man, Greg Tucker, a union official at Waterloo. He was demoted from train driver to ticket collector over alleged disciplinary offences. Uh, the one thing we're not prepared to negotiate on uh, is uh, the safety of our customers, and they know that tomorrow's strike is about uh, our discipline of an activist who's admitted safety offences. Uh, they know we can't compromise on that, but on pay, we have moved and moved. We've offered them far more money than they've achieved anywhere else in the UK. Although Downing Street has now appealed to both sides to negotiate a settlement, there could be more industrial action ahead. The union's executive meets tomorrow. One option is for longer strikes of 72 hours. I don't want to speculate, but at the present time, uh, once our members know what the options that were placed before us, I'm quite sure they will be uh, really incensed at the uh, inept attitude in which the negotiations have gone as far as South West Trains concerned. The two sides are deadlocked. 16 hours of talks over the weekend failed to produce a glimmer of hope of a settlement. This is Phil Bales for London Tonight. Well, all day we've been running a phone poll to see what you think about the industrial action on South West trains. We asked if you support the strike, and thousands of you called. 20% said yes, you do. 80% said no. A 30-ton crane collapsed onto a house in South London this evening. Narrowly missing builders carrying out repairs on the roof. Neighbouring homes in Southfield were evacuated when the crane lifting bricks toppled over, smashing through the roof and first floor of the house. It also crushed a parked car. Two larger cranes later lifted it from the building, and emergency services say it's a miracle that no one was hurt. And there was drama in Surrey as around 500 people were evacuated from their homes after a live Second World War bomb was found in a back garden. Half the villagers of Lingfield were forced to flee their homes as soldiers and police moved in. Sarah Smith has the details. Threatening the village 60 years after it was dropped, the World War II bomb forced police to seal off half of Lingfield while army bomb experts decided on a strategy. We have two possibilities. Uh, one would be to carry out works in situ there or to remove it to a safe location, at uh, which point we'll try, uh, we will detonate it. Local people were taken to the nearby football club. They won't be allowed back into their homes until given the all clear, which is expected later tonight. Well, it's a relief to know that it's been discovered now, really, but it's 
worrying to think that we've had it there all that time. With ignorance is bliss though. The 50 kilogram bomb was found by gardeners working at a house in the middle of the village. As well as placing a 300 meter cordon around it, police have set up an air exclusion zone. Meanwhile, residents just have to sit it out while the experts decide on their plan of action. This is Sarah Smith for London Tonight. One of the masterminds of the Millennium Dome raid said that he had to try to steal the £200 million worth of diamonds as security was so lax it looked like the chance of a lifetime. William Cochrane said after bulldozing into the dome, he smashed through the bulletproof cabinets in just 27 seconds, only to be surrounded by armed police as he was about to grab the gems. Cochrane and three others admit conspiring to steal the gems, but deny the more serious robbery charges. The low-cost airline EasyJet is to order 75 new planes as part of a major expansion planned for the next five years. The deal from the Luton-based firm is worth £2.7 billion. Finally, London's galleries and museums enjoyed a surge in visitor numbers in December. Credit's been given to the government's decision to scrap admission charges on the first of the month. The Victorian Albert Museum in South Kensington had the greatest success. Almost 175,000 people visited last month, up almost 132,000 on December 2000. That's it from us. We're back with bulletins during GMTV from half past six tomorrow morning. Until then, good night. Carlton Weather is sponsored by Admiral. Admiral, car insurance for all weathers. Hello again. We might just see a touch of frost in the London region tonight, mostly across the southern half of our area where the cloud is thinning out. Temperatures could just get close to freezing, but for most of us, it's going to be another grey and overcast night with mist and fog patches, and generally temperatures probably just above freezing. Tomorrow gets off like today did, another grey start, quite dreary sort of start to the day. Mist and fog around first thing, but there's a better chance tomorrow. The skies will begin to look a little brighter through the day. A few sunny spells coming along by the middle of the day, and temperatures, well, no higher than today, if anything, a little lower because this brighter weather is actually cooler weather as well. Temperatures up to around 4 or 5. And fairly settled weather right through the rest of this week. Might just see some weak weather fronts by the end of the week. Until then, it's dry but cold. Carlton Weather is sponsored by Admiral. Ensuring you in all weathers. Accusations. Will, you've stabbed us in the back. Uncertainty. Peak practice is back. I'm the partner. At the new regular time of nine. I make the decisions. Thursday on ITV1. Well, next, some high school students sail into stormy weather in the movie White Squall, starring Jeff Bridges. Ready, dear? I challenge you to match the excellent value of the Saxo Quartet at only $5,995. Or the Zara LX for just $8,995. Or even the Zara Picasso SX for just $11,995. Go on, take up the Citroen Challenge today. Citroen Challenge. Want to see it again? They say it started very small, as most dreams do. Join us this year at Walt Disney World Resort in Florida to celebrate the 100th birthday of Walt Disney, the man who started it all. The Premiership Big Boys are dreaming of the Worthington Cup. They are flying! But so is the nationwide Sheffield Wednesday. Can dreams come true? That is a fantastic goal! Boy, are they turning off the style! Sheffield Wednesday versus Blackburn, Tuesday at 7 on the ITV Sport Channel. The ITV Sport Channel is available on ITV Digital and NTL Home. For more information, call one of these numbers now or contact your paid TV channel supplier. 
now directed by Ridley Scott and starring Jeff Bridges, White Squall.